آئی ایم ان مکہ الحمد للہ مکہ سعودی عربیہ آئی ایم سٹنگ ان دا ہوٹل لابی ویل دا ہوٹل روم اینڈ آبویسلی بہائنڈ می یو کین سی دا کعبہ یو کین سی دا ہرم اینڈ یو کین سی یو نو دا آؤٹ اسکریٹس آف مکہ آل دا وے اپ دیئر رائٹ ناؤ اٹ از کلوز ٹو ٹین اے ایم فار دیٹ ریزن یو ول ناٹ سی دیٹ مینی پیپل آئی مین دیر اسٹل اے لاٹ آف پیپل ڈوئنگ دا تواف اراؤنڈ دا کعبہ بٹ یو ول ناٹ سی ایز مینی پیپل because the temperature over here right now it's close to 110 degrees so yes alhamdulillah i'm here at uh, this uh, really uh, auspicious and blessed and honored uh, place as you can see i still have my hair uh, that means uh, tonight i am planning to go for umrah inshallah with my family do pray that may allah accept it from me and all the people who are here and i also pray that those who have not yet visited this place in Makkah, in Medina, right? This really auspicious locations. May Allah give you uh, the ability, the opportunity, the ease and safety and right intention. So you can also come here, visit here and obtain Allah's honor and Allah's blessings. Ameen. Ameen. I want to give like a brief summary of uh, the Kaaba, the, the Makkah itself and Medina. And the reason is this. You know, many people, mashallah, they spend thousands of dollars. They come with their families. Maybe there's a lifetime opportunity for some people when they, you know, compile the savings and they come for Hajj or when they come for Umrah. So some of you who may not be familiar, those who are new to Islam, one of the five pillars is to make sure that, um, so one of the five pillars is the pillar of Hajj, which is the pilgrimage. So once in a lifetime, every Muslim, is supposed to if the means allows that person for the safety you know with uh, financial stability and whatnot if the means are there and the health is there opportunity is there it is an obligation for every muslim to come and do the hajj umrah is optional but hajj is an obligation it's important thing over here right many times people when they come over here what i have seen is mashallah people come here and uh, they get so much absorbed in the rituals which is good right which is good which is doing the tawaf and running between the safa and the marwa you know all throughout down states you have malls you have shopping centers you have restaurants that's just down here you have a uh, al bake restaurant which is really good you have dunkin donuts and subway and mcdonald's and burger king and dominos and pizza hut uh, tim hortons right the canadian restaurant uh, it is also there So people get so much absorbed into the shopping, into the food and into the rituals. Many times we forget the bigger uh, reason and the bigger lessons that we can learn from visiting this auspicious place. What is that lesson? You know, Kaaba and the Haram and the precinct of Kaaba, this is really auspicious. This is the center of monotheism. You know, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, He was living in a comfortable life with his parents, especially with his father around the area of, uh, you know, Iraq. He left that. Actually, he was kicked out by his father who punished him and they threw him in the fire and they started to torture and oppress him. For what reason? He could have been living safely, right? With his family, with the luxuries, with the upper class status that he had with his family. He could have lived in a nice, comfortable, you know, luxurious life. He gave it all up for one reason, to invite people, his family, especially his father and his countrymen, not to worship idols and humans and uh, you know animals or the creation, but to the worship of the one creator. That was his message. And that was the message. He was let go. He was kicked out. He was oppressed by his people. You know, monotheistic beliefs in those places. So important lesson for all of us is when we visit a precinct like this, we need to realize the bigger picture that the suffering that he went through, his children went through, his wives went through, right? Hajar alayhi salam and Ishmael alayhi salam and Ishaq alayhi salam and the rest of the family, they went through the struggles exactly for one reason, is to make sure that they invite humanity, invite their people to the worship of the one creator. What about you and me? So when we come over here, when we do the tawaf and when we do the sa'i and when we do the other rituals, we need to remember that uh, these are the rituals that Ibrahim alayhi salam that he used to do. 
and the running between the Safa and Marwa, right? It just becomes a ritual for some of us. When you see the green light, you run in between them and then you run, you know, seven times back and forth. That seven times back and forth, obviously it's coming. Prophet Abraham, he had initially the you know, one first wife, Sarah, Sarah alayhi salam. And then you had the second wife who was Hajara or Hagar as you find in the Old Testament. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commanded, you know, Prophet Abraham that go and leave your wife in the precinct of Mecca, right? In this place. So over here, there was no Kaaba at that time. There were no, you know, civilization, not a big city that you see over here. Almost nothing was there. So when the commandment of Allah came to leave the wife of Abraham and the baby son, Ishmael, I mean, she was kind of surprised, you know. But then she asked the question, did your God told you to leave me and my son in this valley around Mecca? Abraham, Prophet Abraham, he said, yes. Then she willingly, she complied, saying that if Allah has said it, I'm going to comply. So just imagine a lady with a baby, right? Not just a lady, right? A lady with a baby. Not in a five-star hotels, not with, you know, all the al bake and the McDonald's and the, you know, Krispy creams together. Nothing was there. No fast food, no civilization, no human, no husband, no family. A lady just alone with the baby. Hey, no food, right? No food also. The food ran out, the milk ran out, the water ran out, and now she's desperate. What can she do? So in her desperation, she ran between Safa and Marwa. These are the two hills. Two hills, Safa and Marwa. So she ran seven times, you know, looking for water because the baby is crying. What can she do? So she ran seven times and then ultimately God, you know, uh, he was pleased. He was testing her, her patience, her content, her, her uh, reliance on the creator. So God sent the angel, Allah sent the angel and the angel dug the earth and in came gushing water. And that gushing water was the well of Zamzam, right? That was the water of Zamzam. So she took the water, she quenched the thirst of her child and herself. And then when people, as they were traveling from different regions, when they saw this water, they came to drink the water and they came to settle down in that place. So that's how the city of Mecca was established based upon the, that context, uh, context and that story. And then obviously the rest is history. Abraham, Abraham, you know, Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, he shared with his son and the son said, Allah has said it, I'm going to comply with it, right? 100%. If this is what God said, Allah said, you know, let's go for it. 100% reliance on Allah. And the lesson that we can learn from this is, you know, many a times uh, we uh, question Allah that why is this happening to me? Right, this challenge, this calamity, this loss of job, or that accident, or you know, that illness. We do our best, and then whatever happens, we say, you know, this is the, the destiny. This is uh, the khadar of Allah. So we should be content because there is always a bigger, higher, greater good in that. We may not understand it right away, but there is a bigger, higher purpose in that. And in our reliance of, on Allah, we do away with hopelessness and the frustration and the depression and the sadness that comes with those challenges. So when we come and visit here and when you come and see, when you look into the YouTube videos about the Kaaba and people doing the Tawaf, it's always important for us to look at the bigger picture, the historical context and the lessons that we can learn from coming and visiting here. Or the next lesson that we can learn is, you know, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was born in Makkah. He was born in Makkah. So when the Wahi came and the revelation came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, that go and share the message of Islam to your people. He went to Mount Safa and then he conveyed the message. Uh, he invited people on the meals to convey the message to them. He used to run up to the people. He used to go come for the pagan pilgrimage and convey the message. He used to dictate letters uh, of Dawa invitation to other heads of states and convey the message. And obviously, by his good conduct, by his good akhlaq, by his good by his good manners, his good example, he conveyed the message of Islam. Some people liked it; they converted to Islam. Some people they did not like it, and they came after his life. So eventually, in the year six thirty two, six twenty two, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commanded the Prophet, peace be upon him, go and do the migration to Medina. So with his companions, right, with the Sahaba, uh, he migrated to Medina in the year 622. And then over there, he established the Islamic State. He implemented Islam. Uh, he shared the message of Islam. He Im implemented the political system, the economic, the judiciary, the penal, the social, the matrimonial, educational, all the systems. He implemented that. And he did social transformation of the society away from racism, tribalism, nationalism, oppression of women, uh, infanticides, right? Uh, extremism, all the isms and all the you know drug abuse people used to have that time, intoxicants. He had a total transformation of the society peacefully, proactively, right? Under Allah's guidance. And he established monotheism in the region. The third lesson is that uh, his companions, the Sahaba, they understood from the message of Islam, from the Quran, from the Prophet's example, that uh, Islam is not restricted to Mecca and Medina. Islam is for all of humanity because when they read the pages of the Quran, they realized that, yes, they have to pray five times. They have to come for Hajj and they have to give uh, you know, uh, Zakat and uh, they have to fast and the six beliefs and the other rituals and the obligations. But then they realized that Islam is not only for Mecca and Medina and Arabia. They realize that Islam is for all of humanity. So with their person, with their time, with their money, with their uh, blessings, with their skills, with their sacrifices, they went to different parts of the world. They went to different parts of the world and they shared the message of Islam. So there were 10,000 plus companions of Prophet, peace be upon him, only a few of them, they are buried in Mecca and Medina. The rest of them, some of them, they are buried in a subcontinent of India, some in the parts of Russia, Syria, right? Lebanon, uh, Palestine and Egypt and parts of Europe, uh, and Africa, different parts of the world. Because they realized when they read the Quran, uh, Allah is commanding them. Take the message of Islam to the whole humanity. You may be thinking, Sabir, where is that? This is in Surah Baqarah, ayah number 143. Allah is commanding them and to all the Muslims. And the ayah continues. Surah Baqarah, ayah number 145. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding the Muslims that uh, you, you have been made an ummah, justly balanced, that you become witnesses to humanity. The way the messenger of Allah was a witness over you. So they realized that Islam is not only for Mecca, Medina, Arabia, or for the Arabs. They realized that Islam is for all of humanity. For that reason, they went to different parts of the world. Example, Amr bin al-As, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in the year 640, he went with the delegation to open the doors of Islam to the people of Egypt. In the year 648, Saad bin Abi Waqas, he went to the people of China to open the doors of Islam to the Chinese. In the year 661, Uqba bin Nafi, he went to the people of Algeria, North Africa, Morocco to open the doors of Islam for them. Uh, in the year 711, right, Tariq bin Ziyad and others. They went to subcontinent of India and Spain and delegations went to uh, the rest of the Europe, Indonesia and uh, uh, and Malaysia, right? Uh, parts of Europe, parts of the, you know, Syria and Lebanon and Jordan and Russia, different parts of the world. And that's the reason you can see that they are buried in those regions away from Mecca and Medina. Even though these are auspi auspicious places, you know, praying in the precinct of the Kaaba, in the Haram, 100,000 times the reward. Not 10 times, 20, 50, you know, 5,000 times, 100,000 times the reward. They left that because there was a bigger, higher mission that Allah has given to them. When you pray in Majid and Nabavi, right, the Prophet's Masjid in Medina, 1,000 times the reward. Majid Aqsa, 500 times the reward. They could have been just sitting here in the precinct of the Kaaba, just staring at the Kaaba and doing the du dua and the zikr and the supplications, they could have done it. 
they could have had open houses right for non muslims when they come in and they gave and they could have had uh, you know conferences they could have had you know street dawa yes they did all of that however they realize that islam is not only for this region it belongs to all of humanity and for that reason they even sacrifice their lives to make sure that islam spreads to, spreads to different parts of the world you and me allah subhanahu wa taala has given the opportunity the means the ability the knowledge and the obligation to spread the message of islam you may be sitting in canada maybe africa maybe japan malaysia right in the caribbean south america uh, usa canada anywhere that you are allah has sent you to that part of the world just like allah has sent the sahaba to parts of the world and they completed their mission allah has sent us to this part of the world right wherever that you are to complete your mission which is to connect the creation with the creator and with allah's guidance to peacefully proactively using wisdom to transform the society away from the ills that you see in the society for example drug abuse oppression of women right the porn industry the lgbt homicides suicide gun violence racism you know gambling you name it the society unfortunately is drowning in darkness with those challenges we have allah's guidance with us we have uh, the example of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with us so let's hope and pray that may allah give you and me and the muslims not only unity and the power and the success but also the ability to share this auspicious blessed guidance with all of humanity may allah make it easy for us jazakallahu khairan assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh